here. So we chose this matchup. Um, it's Lyle Thompson, as you can read, uh, who was the all-time points leader in, in NCAA Division I history um, against Matt Landis, who's arguably one of the best defensemen to ever play the game, especially in the past decade. Um, so pretty, pretty neat matchup. 2015, they were the they were recipients of uh, awards at, at their respective positions. Um, Lyle Thompson, as you can read, um, you know, his stick work is outstanding. He was one of those guys who uh, received a stick at birth. Um, so it's, uh, he's very one handed though. Um, not to say he can't catch and throw with his left, but he's, uh, of the mindset that he's going to really dominate with his right hand. His IQ is through the roof, his vision. You'll notice that every time he has the ball in these clips, um, he's always scanning the field. So when he changes direction, he's snapping his head around. He's very poised. Um, one of my uh, brothers always told me the closer you get to the goal, the more poised you need to be in a weird way. It's opposite. The closer you get to the goal, the sudden things get frantic. D guys are flying at you, but as you'll see Lyle's pretty poised and in control. He's never too high or too low. Um, he uses some deception, some fakes, look one way, go the other. Um, and he really, I think the biggest thing though, is that he capitalizes on little missteps by the defender. Um, you know, putting his stick in front and then he'll roll or trailing with his stick and he'll beat you top side. Um, just feel, he's really good at feeling pressure and he's got uh, really outstanding stick protection for not being a super wide guy. He's six foot 180. I don't know if he hits the weights super hard, um, but you notice in, in almost every clip, his top hand is all the way at the top. I mean, it's bordering on being on the plastic, which is illegal. And it's illegal for a reason because you have so much control over your stick. Ryder Garnsey is another guy that really protects his stick well with two hands. So watch him for you guys. But I think, as I told Paul, I think one of the reasons I wanted this matchup is that Lyle Thompson is neither big, strong, or fast, nor is he slow or weak. Um, he's kind of a, an unspectacular athlete. Um, he just gets it done with what he has. And I, I think, again, it really goes, comes down to his poise and his capitalizing on his mistakes and um, it's, he's really a fun player to watch, especially his stick work. And Paul, you can speak about uh, Matt Landis. Yeah, I think the big things for me uh, when watching Matt Landis is uh, he's physical, but he, um, he doesn't overextend. You know, he does a few times, as we'll see. But in general, his efficiency of movements are better than – probably any other defenseman, defenseman I've seen. And what I mean is um, he doesn't overuse his stick, right? He rarely throws checks and his footwork is really compact, right? He, he doesn't take any uh, superfluous steps or needless steps. Um, and we'll, t we'll break that down in greater detail, but um, yeah. We also see his use of the V hold, which is kind of a component of him being physical. Um, and it's kind of, it's become a big debate among defensive coaches in the past five years, right? To use the V hold or not. And I think as defensemen, we all should have it in, in our repertoire. Um, whether you like, whether you, you love to use it or not, there are times when you will need to use it. Um, and you'll see in this film, he uses it really well. Um, and, then, and then, you know, the physicality, efficiency of movements, the V-hold, and then he also bounces back from failure, which as defensemen we all need to do. Um, there's a couple times in this game he gets scored on, and you know, he, he bounces back, he brushes that off like it, not, like it never even happened. Um, and I think that's a key component that, you know, that mental component of bouncing back after – you give up a goal um, <clears throat> and being able to forget about it and, and, and play the next play is, is crucial. Yeah. So let's get into it. We have about literally three minutes of clips and we'll, we'll be a little stop start. I always remembered at Notre Dame where I played 
Coach Corrigan in the film room was, was uh, you kind of, when you're watching film, you kind of want to let it play, you know, as a player, at least, you kind of want to watch the action. And he was always pausing and rewinding and it was, you know, pretty deflating. So I, you know, I apologize if you guys get that same feeling I had as a player, but obviously this is, um, you know, we've only chosen a handful of clips and, um, you know, we'll, we'll be kind of doing a little stop start, as I said, so. Yeah, use, us. A, use the chat. If you want to see a clip again, if you want us to go over something, throw a question in the chat. Um, we have our eyes on that, so we'll, we'll answer that. Yep. Answer those questions. So as you can see, this is the NCAA championship quarterfinal. This is played in Denver in Mount High Stadium. Lyle Thompson, it's, it's rare that he's catching it off of a feed like this. So the midi drew a bunch of attention and you'll notice Matt Landis is number 43. He's at GLE. So he has not closed the gap, which allows Lyle Thompson to get a run. So notice how he squares up with him. He doesn't really do any, anything special, no double moves, no jab plant go, just kind of a little hitch. And he just runs and you'll see that he kind of gets into his defender. We always want to initiate contact and notice how upright Landis got right there. He was kind of, he got pushed back a little bit, and that's probably the only time in the game that that happened. Um, and you'll see that it's only a minute into the game. Yeah, he's kind of in an awkward position here. His hands are high. Like you said, Thompson came right at him and didn't give him a chance to, to, to retreat early enough. And so Lyle Thompson got into his hands, and he couldn't get into a V-hold. And he's just kind of – he's trying to get into that V-hold, but he couldn't. This is a good job. You know, you, you can talk about this, Webb. Yeah, you know, again, he's going off of Landis's, you know, his body positioning. And it's such a, you know, especially when a guy's handsy like Landis wants to be, to roll as you roll. Notice how Landis's hand just kind of slips off his back. So as soon as he gets his stick his, his yeah. left hand was just a little too far up field. And just like this, this O line of hands, he's protecting the outside. And uh, it's just a great time to roll. Anytime you notice that anybody's overplaying you one side or the other, that roll and hands just slip right off of you. Yeah, I as see that opposed tackle. to trying to do a swim move or something like that. See that tackle is, is you know, he's bent over. He lost his balance, right? You're, you're, you want to keep your chest upright, right? And, and your, your back kind of straighter because you're, like you're sitting down on a chair. As soon as your, your chest goes pointing towards the ground and your body weight leans forward, forget about it. And that's kind of what happened to Landis. So luckily the Notre Dame defense was in good health position. Um, you know, again, all-time points leader, all-time assist leader, and number four, and and they they trust Landis, but at the same time, they're ready to go, and this is a great time to go right here because if they don't, you know, Lyle's got twelve, you know, twelve yards to make a decision to shoot or feed, um, and then look at the backside of the the D, they're in the pipeline, and how they absorb this guy's C cutting um, on the crease. Yeah. A lot of people would look at this and say, wow, nice trail check. But that trail check doesn't happen without this, this guy 30, all right, sliding. Because if he doesn't slide and Landis goes for this trail check right there, Thompson's just going to put it in his right hand and go underneath. So it's a great, great team defense. It was, kind of, it was kind of bad defense, not, you know, mediocre defense by Landis, but his teammates bailed him out. I just want to talk about that right yeah, there. Yeah, back it up a little. That's, I mean, that's how you do a V-hold. You got, you got to use your elbow the way you did, Coach. Yeah. Go ahead. So we're talking V-holds. And, again, I, I know some, some people are against them. I, I, I love them. I think everyone should have them in their repertoire, uh, long poles, that is. Um, and this positioning right here is perfect, right? So if you see um, his stick, 
his stick is pointed, his stick is parallel to the GLE, right? That's how it should be. And then you see his feet, he's got a wide base, good solid base here. His knees are bent, his chest is up. Uh, he's not leaning forward. I, I know sometimes we, we get into a V hold and this right foot you know, crosses over. So now we're facing the midline. That's not what you wanna do. You wanna keep your chest pointed towards the sideline. And then it's just a brilliant shove here. All right, as Lyle Thompson rolls, and he watches his, his right hand, he gives him a shove to drive him off his line. And then look at his right foot, how fast it gets out of the way so that Lyle Thompson can't hook it. Right there. And now he's in great position. I think this is phenomenal defense. And I, I honestly think the, the Notre Dame defense overshows here. And leaves Connor Fields wide open. Yeah. It's just funny that the clip we saw before, Landis didn't play great D. He got beat, but they didn't score because the team, his teammates helped him out. Right there, he played phenomenal one on one defense, but they still scored because the team defense wasn't up to par. Another great show there by number 30. He does that a number of times. Look how Landis just keeps widening him. I mean, you go back to that first clip, and that's the closest Lyle Thompson got to the goal pretty much all day. Um, now, right here, he goes V-hole, but notice his hips. Um, they're actually more pointed up towards, like, the midfield sideline cone um, as opposed to, you know, being a little more parallel. So yeah, this is this is good, but then it's like, all right, that's now he's in trouble, and that's that's a hold. <laughs> so let's take it back, and fellas, just so you know, the you know the reason it's a hold, you can V hold all day as long as you keep your feet moving. But right here, it's like he's trying to like you know crowbar a door open, and um, the refs are going to call that. So you can't you can't like arch your back and. Now, if you visit a good angle right here. Yeah, he's just holding him with his stick. You got to be able to get – you have to get some of your body behind that. Yep. Now, right here, I just kind of think – I like in, you know, defense to a balancing act and, you know, similar to, you know, how you're going to – on a tightrope. And as you can – if you go back a little bit. <laughs> if you go back a little there, bit, right? you can see that he just – he just overcommits to one side. And again, that's most of Lau Thompson's game is just, you know, reaping benefits off of defensive mistakes. So he doesn't need to be that physical. He doesn't need to throw them out of bounds. Um, yeah, I just, it just, it's a fine line. There's a safety net there. Yeah, the guy survived. He's okay. Okay. This is interesting. The, if you watch the footwork in the next couple uh, segments, the next couple of possessions, if you watch Landis's footwork is really unique. I think a lot of defensemen are taught to backpedal, backpedal, and then get into a, a drop step. Landis gets into a shuffle it's like a it's it's a hybrid between a shuffle and a backpedal. He's moving backwards, but he's getting but he's doing it in a really um, choppy shuffle. So he just just watch his feet. And again, look at Lyle running at his man. He just can't quite get close enough to the goal to use the back of it. We talked about the seventh man. There's another example of that little shuffle. You know, and it, I think a good way to think about it is just matching the feet of the attackman. If the attackman is jogging you know, east to west, you can get into a shuffle. All right. 
as soon as he starts coming right at you, yeah, you want to retreat and backpedal. Mm -hmm. But because Lyle Thompson is kind of jogging, Landis is just in a shuffle. So that's a benefit of being, you know, the leader in the country in assists is, and a dangerous dodger at the same time. That double threat is that all these D guys are showing. And yet, if you go back to that previous one, Coach, I mean, you can see all the, the Notre Dame D guys just sink down low. And there's number five just camping out wide open. Well, that was two clips before. Yeah, this um, is it right here. Yep. But look how low all those, you know, guys, that's exactly where they should be. But when you got a guy like Connor Fields who can shoot from 15, um, you know, everybody was showing respect to the ball handler, even though Landis seemingly had him under control. So there's, you know, again, a fine line between showing and being in no man's land where you're almost playing down a man. You know, this one right here, if we go back a little bit. This is again, the first time he really uses the back of the goal, too. So pay attention, guys, to where he changes direction. Yeah, if you watch Landis' feet, again, really efficient. Little, sh little shuffle steps. Just trying to keep him on the end of his stick. Then right here, just, you know – We'll rewind it while Thompson changes direction at the, you know, the, the perfect time right there and catches Matt Landis on the other side of the cage. And now if you were to screenshot this and look at it, you'd say, okay, Lyle Thompson's going to score hundred <laughs> percent. Right. And, and Landis doesn't give up and he takes a great angle over the cage and through the crease to catch him and gets a stick in front. I think the show by the defenseman helped out too. But. Yeah, he hesitated a little bit instead of exploding. But the strength, I mean, that's where the weight room comes yeah. in, D guys and attackmen, able to run through that check. So if you go back and let's see that one again, coach, that shovel shot, that's probably too far. So the shovel shot is a great shot. Freeze it. So if you just – you can hit that rewind button. It'll go back. There you go. Freeze. So D guys are always taught to play the bottom hand. And if you think about when you take a shovel shot, your hands are really hidden, right? I mean, his butt end is pointed at the defender. There's really not much to check. I remember, you know, Neil Lunsford, one of our defensemen, uh, was playing against a guy who was all righty, and he shovel shot. And he's like, I don't know what to do against this guy. I can't get to his hands. And uh, there wasn't much to tell him, except you just got to be more physical, and you just got to widen him to the point that he can't even be in a position to take this shot. Um, but so for you guys that want to add something to your arsenal, you know, the shovel shot is a really crafty shot, and one that's really hard for a defender to get to your hands on. And that's freeze it. So let's just go back a touch, coach. And, you know, the reason I wanted to show this again, this is the first possession of the game. And, and can you guys think of one other time that he caught the ball off of a pass and ran directly at his defender? And notice that Landis is not shuffling. He's not within stick length. And all of a sudden he's on his heels. And uh, you're able to get a little momentum. And even if you're not as strong, I guarantee you that Matt Landis squatted and benched twice as much as Lyle Thompson. But if you just kind of slowly go through this, Coach, I mean, he's upright. He gets Matt Landis upright and on his heels. And he gets to the sweet spot. He gets to that five and five. And his stick is trailing him so he can shoot around him. Again, we talk talked about that a week or two ago, shoot using your defender as a screen. Um, if his stick is trailing you, especially. Um, so all the more reason to catch it, square up, and run at your man. Um, and, you know, I, I think if Lyle Thompson could have this game back, he would have, you know, and the coaches too, probably would have, you know, had a midi initiating and, and had him attacking off of a feed rather than him 
jogging around and you know letting land a shuffle and get a stick in front stick in front stick in front Game's over. It's 14 to nine with 40 seconds left, but the attackman of the year and the D man of the year are going to keep going after it like it's a tie game. And look at the feet of Landis. He's just shuffling. You know, his drop step is minimal. Um, and <laughs> I don't know, this is kind of a Hail Mary pass, but um, when you, you got Connor Fields off ball number five, you know he's probably going to catch it. So let's look at the stats if you pause it. Um, Lyle Thompson ended up with five points, which if you were to look at the box score, you'd be like, that's a pretty good game. Um, three of those assists were, at least three of them were to Connor Fields, right? Number five, where the D was sloughed off, probably didn't even need to show, but had to, because he's Lyle Thompson. And he just, you know, spot feeded a guy to, to catch and rip. Um, the one goal was, you know, a good one. That's when Matt Landis was holding them and the flag was drawn and he stepped away from that stick and then exploded through it, got his hands free. And then um, he had six turnovers. And I'm not big on turnovers. I don't, you know, I'm not the, I think there was a time in my life where I, I, I overcoached and I talked turnovers and I realized it had a counter effect on my players. Uh, they were tight and they were scared to make turnovers. And I don't think I've used the word turnover in two years. Um, I remember uh, Mike Daly, who was the coach at Tufts, said, you know, he's the coach at Brown now. He said that, you know, however many years ago, they led the country in turnovers, <laughs> but they led the country in goals. And so he was willing to live with those turnovers if, you know, if that plus minus evened out a little bit. But um, not – you know, a great game by, by Lyle. I'm sure uh, he was not happy with his last game as a college lacrosse player. And then if you see Matt Landis' stats, um, you know, how many times did they go one-on-one? He had one penalty, two cost turnovers, four ground balls, and uh, he, he owned the matchup. He, he did a great job. And then if you look at the what I think – you know, can be learned from this performance. If you play coach is, um, is if you pause it there, you know, again, as I just mentioned, dodging off of a feed, um, that way he can't close the gap. You're closer to the goal. Same reason why if we want to set up midi dodges, we'll initiate from behind. And, you know, we just saw all those, all five of those off ball Notre Dame defenders creeping down the goal line. Um, that way, middies can catch it and attack in space, and the D has less time to react. Same thing goes for an attackman that we want to uh, exploit his matchup. Um, I, I would have liked to have seen him since Matt Landis had a strength advantage, use more change of direction. That's the COD. Um, using the back of the goal, um, which, again, I call the seventh man. I mean, it's a big, fat dude that can stick out his foot and trip you. Use that guy. Um, and then fakes and hesitations, deception. You know, he. He wasn't using a whole lot of shiftiness, not really any double moves. And I think obviously some picks and some big little could have uh, forced a different matchup for him. But, hey, you know, I think when you get to the end of the year, a lot of coaches would agree that you, you go with what got you there. And maybe the picks and the big little weren't, weren't part of their game plan. Maybe Lyle Thompson is a get out of my way kind of a dodger, and that's fine. But I do think that there's a lot to be learned from, from this matchup. And uh, Coach can talk about Matt Landis and all the reasons why, you know, I think he won the matchup. I think everyone would agree. Yeah, I think the poise and the patience part. Um, we saw one of those clips where he didn't have poise. He didn't have patience. He came at Lyle and um, overextended. And, and, you know, Thompson just uh, he did a quick roll dodge and exploited him. But that only happened once or twice, and and I think for the for the majority of the game, you know, Landis was really patient. He was he was efficient with his step. So, you know, he's keeping Thompson at the end of his stick and using short, choppy, sh shuffle steps, right, to retreat and to keep that buffer between between him and Thompson. And then when he needed to get physical around GLE, he got really physical and and used that that V hold. Um, 
So it was like a perfect combination of footwork, great footwork, and physicality. And, and of course, you, you saw the off-ball support. support. Um, you know, if his, if his team defense wasn't showing and sliding when they, when they did, I think Thompson could have, could have had at least three goals. I know in the game before this, I think they played Loyola, and, and I think he had 11 points. And the reason is because they, they left him out on, the, on an island. Loyola did. They, they left their defenseman, who was covering Thompson, out on an island and decided not to slide at all. Um, and it just, it just highlights the importance of team defense. And you can be the, the best defense, one-on-one defenseman in the world, like Matt Landis, and he still needed help. Um, so it's just, you know, and I think that if we go back and just look at the, uh, one of the V holds and as a defenseman, I, I, I realize that, you know, sometimes V holds, uh, are a little, can put you in, in, in a tough situation, a risky situation. Right. And, um, Let's see if I can just bring this up here and right here. This is the great one and, and this is the great push he had. And a lot of defensemen, and, and I was the same way, they say, well, V hold is risky because you, you give up the inside roll, right? And it's like, yeah, you give up the inside roll, but you're taking away top side, right? And your teammates know that that inside role is, is probably going to come. Um, and so, you know, it's funny in like one-on-one -on -one drills that you do in practice, maybe you go into a V hold and a guy inside rolls you and, you know, maybe he gets a good shot off, but you know, how realistic is that? Right? If you have a, a team behind you expecting that inside role it turns into a great double team. And also, you know, you're not in a totally vulnerable spot in this V hold, as we see here. You do have some options against this inside roll, right? So this wide base, right, choppy steps, stick parallel to GLE, and then if someone does try to inside roll you, you gotta you gotta get physical and push them off their line and then drop step, and that was just perfect D, even though they scored. I think that uh, going back and looking at this, also take it, you know, take some notes on Landis's footwork, his choppy footsteps, because it's so crucial. I, I see so many defensemen when an attackman runs at them take big lumbering drop steps, and that just gives the attack a, a great opportunity to change direction. Right? If, if you're if you have a if you're using a big drop step. All right, that's a great opportunity for an attackman to change direction because your your foot is is in the air. You can't change direction when your foot is in the air during a big drop step. Yeah. So, yeah, it's such a good lesson too on, you know, when your feet are parallel, when they are squared up to your attackman, that whichever way he goes, that drop step is minimal. Uh, yeah, when you're shuffling. And, but when you, as soon as you cross your feet and he rolls, then you got to bring this foot all the way back. And that's where separation occurs. Um, so whenever you can, D guys, make sure you're shuffling to minimize your drop step. And then, O guys, just look at a D guy's feet the first couple times you catch it. You know, when you're moving on the perimeter, if your coach says, let's spin it once or whatever. As you're jogging, you maybe take a peek down at his feet, and if he's cross, he's running with you, then you can throw a fake and boom, change direction and gain a step that way. But and I think that's honestly, as I said at the beginning, I, that's a lot of what Lyle Thompson's game is, right? You know, is taking advantage of those little missteps, the crossing the feet, the lunging, the you know overextending, and Landis was pretty good about being balanced with his hands, his body, his feet. He was just between him and the goal the whole game. It was really impressive, um, which is why you got to run hard enough that 
he can't shuffle. I mean, seriously, you get a guy that's, you know, as fast as you, you get on the line and say, you have to shuffle and I'm going to sprint and tell me who wins the game or wins the race. Um, that guy's going to have to start running with you eventually. And as soon as he starts running and crossing his feet, that's when you throw a little fake change direction and boom, separation is gained. Um, any questions, anything in the, any chatter, any, anything in the chat room? Um, anything you guys want to see next week, um, whether it's another matchup or, I mean, we, we could, I think a good next step could be to, you know, two middies or a midi LSM matchup or, um, dodging from X. All right. Steens. Maybe a little more specifically a one V one from X or even from up top. Anybody else? Overview of a pair's offense, for sure. We could do that. It'd be fun. LSM fast breaks. <laughs> it's, it's very specific. It's a very specific tutorial. That's right. We'll you probably need talk to one watch on the later. overtime game, uh, Notre Dame Duke. Ah, don't do uh, that. 2000. <laughs> <laughs> That's I it. was at that That'd game. Be a quick that, one. Was, that was brutal. CJ Costabile. Costabile, yeah. Unbelievable. Well, fellas, if you have any ideas, any questions, anything going on, you know, we're, we're happy to help you be a resource for you. Um, but we're, uh, we're always talking, Paul and I, and, uh, you know, about lacrosse, but specifically about you guys and, um, you know, just wanted to get back out on the field. And um, I feel like the time's coming soon, just waiting on some, some field availability. And, um, but, you know, Anytime you guys want to uh, have a question about anything, you know, we're here for you. So feel free to reach out. We've got a couple questions here. Okay. Uh, v hold or playing straight up? I think it all depends on the position of your, of your feet. So if we rewind it here, All right, so let's just take this right here. I'm a fan of getting a push to widen and then getting into a V-hold. Landis likes to go, and, and a lot of the Notre Dame defensemen like to go V-hold all the time and really early, and it works for them. All right. Um, but for me, I just like an early push with a cross check to widen. And then as that attackman comes up, then get that stick in front and, and then get into a V-hole. So if his less left foot is already, you know, swung around right here, there's no need to get into the V-hole. You can just give him a push and he widens him out here. Yeah. Because his hips are pointed towards the sideline here, he's got to get into a V-hole. I'd like to say that the V-hold was exclusive for this matchup because Lyle Thompson's so right-handed. That's another reason why you might want a V-hold because there was a couple feeds, right, that Lyle Thompson had where Landis' stick was behind him or at the very least not on his gloves, not on his elbow or forearm in this case. So, um, but I do know that Notre Dame is big on the V-hold or at least Jerry Byrne was when he was there. So... I think when you're playing against a one-handed player, V hold it up if he's a righty and you're a righty. Yep. But again, hip positioning I think is is the most is square one. Um, good strategies for clearing. Well, I think. It depends on personnel, like a lot of teams, like if you have a shallow bench, you might not want to send, um, you know, a pole, you know, your LSM downfield uh, at Cal we do. I've always done that. I, I think, I think it was just the, the clear that I always uh, responded to because if you send your LSM down the field, 
he's usually covered by the best omitty, right? And a lot of times the best omitty wants to get off the field to get the LSM or at the very least a short stick D midi, um, in which case you could get transition, fast break, something good. And if the omitty just stays with the LSM, then you can occupy one guy and it just takes two players out of the equation and simplifies everything. So a cow, we get our third pole off the box, LSM goes deep, and we're able to have three shorties across the midline. And um, we feel like that's really increases our percentages. And it's the same clear actually that Loyola used in 2012 when they won the uh, national championship. Loyola was not the most talented team in the country, but they had one of the reasons they won it was that their clearing percentage was higher than any other team. Um, and they had really good shorties and LSM, Scott Ratliff and Josh Hawkins. And, um, but that's the, we use the exact same clear they did. So I think sending an LSM down the field, at the very least, I think the best strategy is getting the, the ball in the hands of shorties. And that's what we do. Anything else? All right, boys. All right. Thanks for joining. Good times. Great job, fella, uh, coach. Um, Great job, coach. Next bad. week. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, yeah, if you have any ideas, any questions, fire them our way. And, you know, keep being good people and staying strong and healthy and good to your parents. And we'll see you guys again soon.